I'm Dr. J, and this is a video about the most important data structure in R, and that is, of course, the data frame. Now, before we jump right into data frames, I want to talk about uh, matrices. But before I talk about matrices, I should mention that the script I'm using here today uh, is down in a uh, link in the description. So if you want to follow along and run the code as I run it, then you should go ahead and uh, download that script now. Uh, load it up in your R session and follow along as we go through this discussion of data frames. Now, a data frame is really just a fancy matrix, and so I'm going to uh, remind you about a couple of features of matrices in R before we get into data frames. So first off, matrices are uh, have two dimensions, right? They've got rows and columns, uh, and in R, the key is that matrices cannot have different types. So, well, let me say it this way. Within a matrix, you cannot have different data types. So you can have a matrix of, say, logicals like we do here. You can have a matrix of uh, integers like we do here. You can have a matrix of uh, double precision or numeric in R. You can have a matrix uh, even of letters or, uh, I guess in R it's called a character, right? Uh, characters or strings, which are still called characters in R. So that's all fine and dandy. So within a matrix, you can have, uh, all these different types of data, but you cannot have them simultaneously in one matrix. So here's my attempt to do that. Here I'm now using the C bind function as a reminder. This is binding these columns. The columns here, the first one is just true and false, so that's a logical column vector. You know what? Last time I said you should go ahead and use the fully spelled out true and false, so I'm going to go ahead and do that here. I'll probably change the code above too to use true and false. The second column are these integers 1 to 2. And the last column, this letters just has all the letters of the alphabet from A to Z. And so we're just taking out the first two. So it's just A and B. Now, when we try to bind these three columns together that have different types, what's going to happen is that they're automatically going to be converted. And in this case, they're automatically converted into characters. Okay, so it, it looks like we have a matrix where the first column is logical, the second column is uh, numeric or integer and the third column is characters but in fact you should be able to recognize by the different quotes that are here right that in fact what R has done is that has converted the logical true into the character true capital T R U and E right and similarly for the second column it's converted these numeric or integer quantities one and two into characters one and two and so matrices are a bit limited for doing data analyses or data analytics uh, because generally the data that we have does have some variables that are quantitative and some variables that are qualitative or characters. And so we want a matrix that allows us to have, in particular, every column to have a different data type or possibly to have a different data type. And so I'm going to construct a data frame here and I'm going to use the data.frame function to do so. And so that's why you'll oftentimes see uh, in people who are writing up about R, uh, they will refer to it as a data dot frame, especially in writing. Typically, we don't say that as we're talking. Um, but the data frame in R, the formal object type is a data dot frame. So if we are going to construct a data frame, then we want to use this data dot frame function, or at least this is one way to do it. Um, and here we're going to then define what the different columns are in that data frame. So the first column, I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call it logical. And here I'm going to put in the values, or a vector really here, of true and then false, right? So it's only going to have two elements, and that means that this column is going to have two elements. Uh, here I'm going to do an integer, one colon two. That gets the vector just one and two. Here's a numeric quantity, 1.1 and 2.2. And finally, character, just like we had before, A and B. And so with a data frame now, you can put these all together. So here we have what looks to be a matrix in that it has two rows and four columns. But now, in fact, we don't have those extra quotes anywhere, right? So true just looks like true, false looks like false, uh, integer, numeric, and all that just looks like the quantities that they actually are. And that's because there has been no conversion in R to any of these quantities. So the logicals are actually logical, uh, integers are actually integers, numerics are actually numerical quantities, and characters are characters. Uh, now as a reminder, that means within a column, right? So you cannot have within a column different character types. You can just have different types amongst the different columns. Okay. 
So let, let's take a look at one of the uh, built-in data frames in R. So this data frame is called tooth growth. So one thing we can do is we can just print it out. Um, and if we do that, uh, this data frame is kind of big. I mean, not really big as far as data sets go, but you know, we can't view it all in the window here. Even if we make the window bigger, we can't view the whole data frame in one window. And so we're gonna talk in a bit about, you know, how can we uh, take a look at these data frames without having to look at the entire data frame. But before we get there, um, you know, a data frame like this, where you actually have the numerical and uh, qualitative uh, values, uh, doesn't really tell you enough about what's going on. Usually you need some kind of metadata to tell you what's in the data set itself, in this case, what's in this data frame. And so data frames that are constructed in uh, R, that is, they are in an R package typically, uh, have help files associated with those data frames. And so if you just do question mark and the name of the data frame, you will get help. So here, down in the bottom left-hand corner, uh, is the help file for this tooth growth data frame. Um, just, I wanna quickly just go through here and look at the description. So this is uh, showing you for it via some experiment where they varied the amount of vitamin C and the way that the vitamin C was presented, whether it was in orange juice or directly as ascorbic acid. Um, and at three different dose levels, they are looking at the response of how these odontoblast cells grew in a set of guinea pigs. And so now that gives a little more context to the data frame that we're looking at here. So we can think about you know, what's probably happening here. It's not 100% sure given each, uh, or given what we know, but it's pretty clear that this, each row is an individual pig. That pig was supplemented with some amount of vitamin C in two different forms, orange juice, or in this case, it's going to be ascorbic acid, and the dose they were given, and then the measurement of the length of their odontoblasts. Okay. And so um, having metadata like this is always key for data sets, again, for data frames that are exist in our packages, they will typically have useful help files and you should take a look at. So now let's talk a little bit about how you sort of explore quickly these data frames rather than printing the whole thing out and sort of scrolling through, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do is just check the class like we did last time and it in fact is a class data.frame, right? So a data frame is a more advanced class than we've talked about previously, right? Because it has the combination of all these basic classes like logicals, integers, numerics, and characters. Because it sort of has a matrix structure where you can use the dim function to find out how many uh, rows and columns it has. So it has, as we've seen a second ago, it has 60 rows and three columns. If you want to briefly look at the data set, um, I typically use this head function. That by default just prints out the first six rows. If you want to see a bit more than that, you can. Let's say the first 10 rows. Um, and this gives you a, a brief glimpse into what the data set looks like. Um, head starts from the top of the file and starts going through down. Otherwise, if you're interested in the end of the file, you can use tail. So tail looks at the last, by default, six rows, but again, you can change it. Now, a lot of people that I work with uh, appreciate being able to sort of view the whole data frame. So in our studio, I believe this does not work in our, the R GUI, but I could be wrong. You can let me know in the comments if I'm wrong. Uh, there's this view function with a capital V, and this allows you to open up a new tab next to your script that allows you to scroll through the data set. And so if you really do want to view it, uh, maybe this is a good way to do it. I think maybe you can sort things here. Uh, maybe you can uh, right, get some information about there's 30 entries total right, that have VC and so forth. And so uh, this view is, is somewhat user-friendly. Uh, I tend to not use it probably because I grew up with R before R Studio and therefore before Vue, or at least before I knew about Vue. Let's go with that. Uh, other quick summaries of a data frame is this summary function. So this will depend on the column type. But what you can see here is that for numeric columns, it gives you a six number summary, right? Minimum, maximum, first and third quartiles, and the mean and the median. For character or factor actually, columns, it's going to give you a summary of the number of columns, sorry, number of rows that had that value in that column. So in this case, we had 30 rows that had an OJ supplement and 30 that had this VC or ascorbic acid, vitamin C supplement. Uh, another um, 
function that I use a lot is str, which you can think of as the structure of an object. Uh, we haven't, I don't think, used this one before. Uh, but here with data frames, the structure tells you a bunch of information sort of at a very quick glance. So you have things like the number of rows and columns. Uh, because data frames are constructed where each row is an observation, then this tells you the number of observations, which is the number of rows, and that the columns are the different variables for that observation. And so this tells you that there are three columns or three variables. Then it tells you the um, names of those columns. So LEN, SUPP, and DOS, that's the actual name of those columns. It tells you the type that's in that column. So this is numeric, the last one's numeric. The middle one is factor. Hopefully you caught my video on factors. Um, and then it tells you what the first few values of the observations are. So the first length was 4.2 and then 11.5 and so forth. For the factors, it tells you how many levels. It tells you the values of those levels, at least the first few. Um, and then it does this numerical representation of those levels. And so this first two means that the first observations are VC. And if, once you get to a one, then the observations are OJ. If this doesn't make sense to you, you probably need to go back and watch that factor video. Um, now, what else do we do? Uh, oftentimes, we want to just know what the variable names are in a data frame. And so you can type names. Um, call names also works. I just tend to use names because it's shorter. Um, you can also extract the row names. This doesn't seem to be as helpful for me. Um, if we take a look at the data frame, you can see here, this is the row name, the one, two, three, four, five. And so if you print out row names, you get it here. Uh, sometimes rows can be more informative or the row names can be, uh, but most of the data sets I've seen uh, do not have informative row names. And so it's, that's not a function I use a lot. Now you can access columns and rows uh, in data frames just like you can with matrices. So this right here is going to extract out the second column in all of the rows. So here it is, there's that second column. You can see the initial observations are all VC and then we get into OJ. But with data frames, because we have column names, we generally don't access columns by their number, right? But instead what we do is we access the column by its name. And so there's a couple of ways of doing this. Uh, one is that you can do this one, which is a lot more helpful actually, if you're going to pull up multiple col columns at the same time. So here, this allows you to pull up length and supplement at the same time. If you just want to pull out one column, then the quicker way to do it is using the dollar sign and then the column name. So that just pulls out that second column, but does it by its name. Uh, this is definitely the preferred way to go because sometimes uh, you yourself or your collaborators will have changed the order of the columns, uh, but not the names. And so if you use the name, then you're more assured of getting the right column, less issues with your script generally. Um, you can also filter or subset the data, right? So this just looks at the first 10 observations. So this is really the same as using that head function we saw earlier. More commonly, you might want to pull out some observations that satisfy some criteria. In this case, I'm pulling out all the observations where the uh, vitamin C was given uh, via orange juice or OJ, right? So if we scroll here, you can see that all the observations are OJ. We've gotten rid of all those VC observations. Now, um, well, I mean, I'll say it now, but I'm going to say it in a bit too. Uh, this is not my generally favored way of actually accessing columns and filtering data sets anymore. We're going to talk about the dplyr package and the whole tidyverse in a future video, and that's definitely my way uh, to access these. But this is still the base R way and important for you to know. Okay, so why are data frames important? Data frames are important because uh, they're used for the basis of almost any analysis you'll do in R. So they're used when you're reading in data, they're re used when you're doing descriptive statistics, grapple statistical statistics, and when you're doing statistical modeling. All of that, the foundation is data frames. So extremely important. So I just have quick examples of those. Um, and again, we're going to talk about the whole tidyverse. So there's generally different ways that I would go about everything we're going to do here. But just to give you an understanding of what you can do when you have a data frame. So the first thing to do is, I'm going to do is I'm just going to write a file out. Because typically, your data are going to be on a file. So if I go back here. Right here, we can see that file toothgrowth.csv sitting on my computer. Row.name just ensures that it's, uh, when it's false, just ensures that you don't record those row names when you write out the file. And in this case, since they're not informative, they're just the numbers one to 60, I don't wanna write them out. Now I'm gonna read it back in, right? So this is the key. So you've got your data on your computer, in this case, as a CSV or comma separated value file. 
you can use the read.csv function to read it back in. And sure enough, when you read it in, it's read in properly as a data.frame. Okay, so when you're reading data in, it's generally going to be as a data.frame. Now I've got this file sitting on my computer, and if you're following along in your code, then you do too, and so you want to get rid of it, uh, use the unlink function to delete that file. Now you can see it's gone over here. All right, so we've read the data in, right? Okay, I did use D here. We're gonna go back to using tooth growth. Um, you know, we can look at a summary of it. That's a typical thing I do when I read the data in. Uh, but we can also do descriptive statistics, like by different groups. So in this case, I'm going to do the summary, but differently for the VC and the OJ group. And so this is the code to do it. Don't worry about that so much. Just look at the results. Here we get the different summaries, but here with the OJ and here for the VC. In addition to descriptive statistics, we do this for graphical statistics. So here's an example of looking at the length versus dose plot. Uh, generally, the window down here isn't great, and so I will typically zoom the plot and maybe expand it out even more just so I can see what's happening. And it's pretty clear from this plot that as you increase dose, the length of those odontoblasts are longer. Okay, so graphical statistics. If we get into statistical modeling, this is a regression model. So if you happen to know regression, hopefully this table in particular will look a bit familiar. All right, so the whole point here was that data frames are the foundation of doing basically any statistical analysis or analytics uh, in R. So good to know data.frames. Now, I'm going to encourage you to go ahead and sort of try things out for yourself. And the way to do that is to look at this data function. So if you look at the output of this data function, it gives you a whole bunch of built-in data sets in R that you can just open up and you can check out. And in fact, when you look online and you see people who are uh, using YouTube videos uh, or producing, I should say, uh, or producing blogs or these kind of things and they're using data sets, invariably they're using a data set that's already been built into R. And so I've just pulled out a couple of ones that you'll see commonly in different places. There's this Iris data set uh, and there's this empty cars data set. And so these are a couple of data sets that you could use uh, to just play around with how data sets work or data frames work in R. Uh, if you want another one, then go ahead and look at that data function. All right, so I really appreciate you sticking with me. I uh, hope you found this informative. If you did, uh, I'd appreciate a like down there. If you think I'm gonna create uh, videos that will be helpful to you in the future, then go ahead and hit subscribe. Uh, and as always, comment. Uh, let me know what questions you have about data.frames. Until next time, have a great one.